Okay. Good afternoon. Welcome. It's uh, 5.30 and I'm calling the June 6, 2023 meeting of the Historic Site Preservation Board to order. May we please have the roll call? Yes, uh, Chair Huff. Present. Vice Chair Present. Nelson. Present. Member Miller. Present. Member Hansen. Present. And Member, Member Rosenau. Here. Perfect, we do have a quorum. Thank you. May we please have the staff report on the posting of the agenda? Yes, the agenda for this meeting was posted for public review uh, at the City Hall Bulletin Board on the west side of Council Chambers and the Planning Department counter in accordance with the city policies. Thank you. Does the board have any revisions to the agenda? <laughs> oh, that penny, huh? <laughs> okay, so um, may I please have a motion to approve the agenda? I'll move. Okay, so- Second. Um, second, okay. So um, I have a, a motion by uh, Rosanna and a second by Miller. Is there any discussion about the agenda? Okay, seeing no discussion. Uh, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any, any opposed? Okay, motion passes five to, to zero. So this time has been set aside for members of the public to address the Historic Site Preservation Board on agenda items and items of general interest within the subject matter of the jurisdiction of the board. Although the Historic Site Preservation Board values your comments pursuant to the, board, the Brown Act, uh, it generally cannot take any action on items not listed on the posted agenda. Uh, there are three minutes assigned for each speaker. Testimony for public hearings will be taken at the time of the hearing. So staff, has anyone requested to comment on a non-public uh, hearing item or item that's not on today's agenda? Uh, we have not heard from any individual members specifically, but I do see that there are people present. I'm not sure if they're um, here to comment. So raise your hand if you'd like to comment. So it looks like Sydney Williams. Hi, Sydney, welcome. So if you want to unmute, Eric, I will. Um, we can, uh, you can talk. <laughs> Thank you. Well, good evening, board members and staff. Um, I would like to speak in support of the amendment to the approval of the Illuminera. A luminaire house placement in the South Park parking lot of the museum. And having the a luminaire house located adjacent to the museum is not only a recognition of its importance in Albert Frey's work, but a spectacular addition to the museum's collection. Combined with Frey House 2 nearby, this is an extraordinary educational opportunity and promises to attract numerous visitors. Having said that, I believe the security and visibility of the structure are of utmost importance. The plans show a generous amount of lighting and landscaping, but I am in favor of a fence that will provide greater security than the current perimeter wall. The steel fence design is elegant and compatible with the modern design of the house and has no impact in my mind uh, on the museum's design. In the class one designation of the museum, the parking lots were listed as non-character defining features. So therefore, I urge you to approve the amendment and I thank you very much for considering this. Thank you, Sydney. Are there any other speakers? Any other comments from anyone else? Just raise your hand. Okay, I'm seeing no additional speakers. So we shall proceed to the consent agenda for approval of the minutes of May 2nd, 2023 HSPB meeting. So regarding the minutes, are there any revisions? 
to the minutes of that May 2nd meeting. Any revisions this time? Good. Okay, may I have a motion to approve the minutes of May 2nd, 2023? Okay, I have a motion uh -huh, uh, by Vice Chair Nelson and a second by Member Hansen. Is there any discussion about the minutes or the motion? Any discussions? Okay, seeing none, I'll call for the question. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? So motion passes uh, five to zero. Uh, let us now proceed to agenda item 2A, uh, public hearings. And this is regarding application by the city of Palm Springs for possible historic designation of Caracchia Pension Hotel located at 257 South Potencio Road. I see um, on the agenda that the staff recommendation is to continue this item to a date certain of our July 6, 2023 meeting so may I have a motion to that effect, please? Is that meeting, is that the sixth and not the fifth, correct? Uh, I'm sorry, it is, is it the fifth? Uh, I just wanted to, oh, yeah. Yeah. it's July, sure. it's July 5th. July 5th, so my mistake, sorry. Thank you, you're always good, Janet, at getting the dates exactly right. Details. So, okay, so so I would like to have a motion to continue the item to July 5th. And so, so I, I have a motion uh, by member, uh, uh, member Miller and a second by member Hansen. And uh, so um, is there discussion about this, um, this motion um, and why we are, uh, recommending to continue. Uh, Sarah? Uh, yes, just for clarification, uh, the notice item for historic designation is being continued at the request of staff because we were unable to reach the owners of the property to discuss the designation and set up uh, the subsequent site visits. And so staff is recommending uh, that continuation to the next HSPB hearing of July 5th. Very good, thank you. Thank you for letting us know about that. So are, uh, is there any other um, discussions or any other comments before we vote? Okay, seeing no other discussions or questions, I call for uh, the, the question. All in favor of this motion, please say aye. 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 Okay, and anybody opposed? Okay, so the motion passes uh, uh, five to zero. Moving right along, um, uh, there is no unfinished business today. So let us move on to new business. And I would like to announce that I will be uh, recusing myself uh, from agenda item 4A as I have a current business relationship uh, with the applicant. And um, Vice Chair Nelson, uh, would you please conduct the meeting for the board's consideration of item uh, 4A? Sure, absolutely, my pleasure. Okay, so I'm going to uh, recluse myself and turn it over to you guys. Thank you. Be back later. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let the record show that Chair Hap is recusing herself at this time on item agenda 4A. <clears throat> we'll just wait for her to no. turn off her video and <laughs> great, wonderful. So um, item 4A, the Palm Springs Art Museum Incorporated represented by Sanborn Architecture Group Incorporated, requests approval to amend the Certificate of Appropriateness for alteration to the Illuminaire House Project, a Class 1 historic site located at 101 North Museum Drive, HSPB number 35, case 3.330. May we have a staff report, please, Sarah? Yes. Let me go ahead and share my screen. Uh, 
Are you able to see that in full view? Yes. Yes, okay, perfect. All right, so the application before HSPB today is a request to amend the previously approved certificate of appropriateness for the installation of the sculpture garden and the final design of the site. Uh, the specific item up for discussion is related to the existing perimeter wall around the south parking lot and the newly proposed fence. So taking a look at the site context here, the area in question is highlighted in red and it's on the parcel that contains the Palm Springs Art Museum. The Illuminaire House was approved to be installed in the south parking lot, which you can see here. The Certificate of Appropriateness was approved by HSPB back in 2021, uh, further uh, defining the character defining features uh, and the non-character defining features of the art museum was uh, took place at this particular hearing. Uh, after considering various needs uh, for the installation of the Illuminaire House, the museum has indicated that a taller wall or a taller fence around the installation is recommended for security purposes and, the existing, and that the existing three foot tall perimeter concrete wall would not be sufficient. Uh, these are images of the perimeter wall as seen today. Um, you can see that the wall is uh, a, a, it's stripped of ornamentation or any sort of ornamental detail. It maintains an unfinished surface treatment. And on the right side, you see uh, a, a very specific type of wall detail that you see throughout the museum. A perimeter wall around the main museum uses these vertically grouped details on the wall. So it's kind of a juxtaposition of what we see on that site. Uh, so, the, so the request that we have before you um, by the museum is the request to remove the existing perimeter wall around that south parking lot. This is um, in the staff report as well, but during that review of the application back in 2021, staff did suggest the following list of character defining features and non-character defining features for the research, or for the resource, excuse me, to further clarify the designation. Um, at the time of the initial designation, this wasn't clarified. Uh, during this review, the board identified the perimeter wall around the south parking lot as a, as a non-character defining feature. Um, however, oh, staff, Staff identified it as a non-character defining feature. However, um, at that meeting, the board did identify that perimeter wall around the south parking lot as a character defining feature and requested that the future perimeter wall around the Illuminar House match that design. Staff's assessment of this wall continues to classify it as a non-character defining feature. Um, but in light of the request for the removal of the wall, staff recommends HSPB take a look and maybe reevaluate this feature to determine if it is indeed character defining or if the removal of the wall is of minimal impact. The applicant has proposed a new five foot tall fence using uh, a tube steel with the individual members spaced in a way um, that provides for visual transparency. The applicant did provide um, two renderings that came a little bit later. You can see in the slides here of what that may look like. Uh, the highlighted area that you see on the left of the site shows where that new fence would be installed. Um, specifically addressing the uh, proposed fence, uh, it does meet the criteria for alterations to a class one site. The design does not visually or materially impair the character defining features and is considerably distanced from the art museum. The mass scale and materials and even the proportions of the fence do not negatively impact the historic nature of the site. And it does remain subordinate to the landmark. So in conclusion, staff finds that the proposed perimeter fence of the tube steel is appropriate with the conditions, with the condition that the location needs to either meet the five foot setback required by zoning or the applicant needs to submit for an administrative minor modification application. Um, and the complete removal of the existing perimeter concrete wall is appropriate if it no longer is considered a contributing feature or determined a minimal alteration. Uh, with that, uh, staff is available to take any questions related to the staff report. Uh, the applicant team is also here to answer any questions. Again, the owner's position or the art museum's position is um, to request the removal of the existing perimeter concrete wall and the approval of the new transparent fence for um, their various security reasons. Uh, 
Uh, that concludes my presentation. I'm going to go ahead and reduce the screen. Great. Thank you, Sarah, for that. Uh, very helpful. Um, so now at this time, I believe uh, it would be appropriate to um, uh, if the applicant has uh, anything to say, would that be correct, uh, sir? Right. And yes, that's correct. Is there anyone who would like to speak on behalf of the applicant at the time? Yes. Uh, my name is Leo Marmol. Hi, with Marmol Radziner in Los Angeles. Uh, thank you very much. I am here as a member of the Board of Trustees. Uh, the museum um, has hired Alan Sanborn as our executive architect uh, and a design team to lead this entire effort. Uh, so um, number one, the new proposed metal fence is in fact going to be located five feet back from the property line uh, and is being proposed therefore at a height of six feet. Uh, the request to remove the existing concrete wall is coming specifically from the security department at the museum. The security department is concerned because they have had issues with people attempting to sleep uh, behind that solid concrete wall, and they requested an open fence design so they can see the entire property. If it were left up to the security department, we would absolutely have no landscaping as well, uh, but they were willing to compromise and let us install some landscaping to soften the edge and to uh, soften the existence of that perimeter security fence. Uh, but they felt it was important to have a consistent enclosure around the exhibition uh, to protect the site. The exhibition will be open uh, full time during the day. Uh, it is a public exhibition. Uh, and the, the entry gate will be locked during non-open hours nighttime. Uh, so our request is quite simple, is to amend the approval, uh, the certificate of appropriateness to allow us to remove the existing concrete wall. And I'm happy to answer whatever other questions you have. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions for Mr. Marmol? I do. Yeah. Yes, Mr. Marmol, could you speak briefly to, you mentioned you were on the board of directors, is that the correct board? The, the board of trustees. Trustees, is there an internal process um, for these types of issues? I mean, was there a discussion among the board of trustees in terms of, you know, the change to the project? The project went, was led by a museum team that I directed with Tom Minder, and there were a number of members of a number of board members along with staff uh, as the team to direct the design team. Okay. The design team, as I said, was led by um, Alan Sanborn, but we also had historic architects um, and uh, Francis Campani and Michael Schwarting, who who kind of led the historical. Um, process. Okay. Uh, and, and so uh, with that, we then went before the entire board of trustees to get approval uh, to raise the funds to execute this project and approve the design, uh, which they did in fact approve. So the board of trustees um, approved the effort and it was led by a museum team. Okay, sounds very well thought out. Thank you. And I did have another question. Um, on hmm, page three of the staff report, there's the detail of the pr proposed gate. You said it was going to be six feet high. Correct. Do the plans show five feet, Sarah? It looks like. Uh, you're right. I stand corrected. I apologize. Okay. Five feet tall. Okay. okay. Sorry okay. about that. Thank you. I have a couple of questions for staff, but, but thank you so much. Appreciate it. You're welcome. I do have a question for uh, Leo. Hi, Leo. Hi there. Uh, so can you just clarify for the existing concrete wall, is that currently a five foot setback and the new steel perimeter fencing would just be going right in its place or is there a differentiating 
setback between that current wall and the new steel fencing? No, the existing concrete wall is less than five feet from the property line. So it is in fact too close uh, to allow a five foot tall um, screen wall. Gotcha. So it will now be five feet back and five feet tall, just to finally clarify. That is correct. Wonderful, thank you. Anyone else have any questions? Scott? Yeah, uh, thanks, Mr. Marmol. Uh, the plans show that the color of the fencing is going to be Dunn Edwards Vulcan, but I don't have any real indication as to what that color is. I'm assuming it's a gray or a silver, but could you speak to the actual color of the steel fencing? And then also, what is the sheen going to be on the fencing? I'm a little concerned about the sheen. So could you address those questions? Uh, actually, is Alan Sanborn on the call? I would love Alan's help on that. I believe Vulcan is, in fact, a gray color. Um, and I can't speak to the sheen, per se, uh, but it is just a narrow picket. Um, fence, so there shouldn't be any glare issues or anything like that with narrow pickets. Um, Leo, I'm here. Oh, great. Could you uh, tell us a little bit about the actual color? Yeah, it's a, um, it's kind of a, there's a silver, it's a silver color base, but I would reference it more with a, a gray, kind of a gray mixture, but it's uh, meant to um, sort of be, um, pick up sort of the luminaire house coloring that we have going on and uh but not be really bright it's it's uh, very muted and it would be in a matte finish so there is no um it's not a high gloss so to speak that sort of thing thank you great uh very observant member miller thank you for that and leo and alan anyone else have any questions for the applicant at this time Okay, anyone have questions for staff? Uh, I do as well, but Member Hanson, please begin. Sarah, do you recall when this was heard in 2021? Or do you have that? I have an August date. August 2021 was when it was heard, um, <laughs> was for the sculpture garden. I, right, uh, okay. So I think I was actually there. <laughs> I think I'm sorry, I must be getting old. Um, I just don't remember the discussion, to be completely honest with all of you, about the this perimeter wall as a character defining feature. And I was, I mean, I, in a way it's moot because I'm in favor of taking it out, but I'm just a little curious, especially when the parking lots themselves weren't contributors, why would we have made a retaining wall around it a contributing feature? But I, sorry, I don't know, maybe some of you do. I mean, I don't want to spend too much time in the on that. I'm just sort of curious what the thinking was at the time. An you know. Oh, yeah. In attachment D, where it talks about the actual approval, um, I believe there was a subcommittee that was formed. Oh, uh, okay. So that might have been discussed. Part of the that yeah, it may have, yeah okay. it may have been discussed in more detail during that subcommittee meeting, but it um, it yeah. um, came up so as an addition. So I'm not crazy or anyway, okay, that sounds good. Um well, um, I know there are other people who have questions. I just want to say I'm I'm in favor of the project as proposed and also in favor of um, the, um, I guess if we call it a re-decision on the contributing um, element, the, the wall as a contributing or character defining feature of the museum, right? Is that what we're looking at? So I would be in favor of finding that a non-contributing or character-defining feature to the museum and its removal and the approval of the new proposed fence. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Janet. Any other staff, excuse me, any other board members have questions for staff? Okay. Seeing none, I do have a few. So, um, uh, Sarah, a um, couple of questions. Yes. The first one is regarding the parking spaces. And I see that there's 22. 
Uh, one of which is dedicated to handicap parking. And I just want to make sure that within the city requirements and meet code. I think the, the art museum, it's, oh, am I muted? Oh no, the art museum itself has a, a specified parking requirement and I believe it um, is within, um, but when we review it for plan check, it is something that will be reviewed at that time. Okay, great, I figured. Um, the other question that I have here, can you hear me? Okay, great. Um, on um, the second page of attachment C on the staff report is a letter from Sanborn Architecture, which is extremely helpful. Uh, it basically comes back and answers all of the points that the subcommittee had. And I was very appreciative of that. I did have two questions about um, items three and four on that letter from Sanborn. And it says that the existing flagpole uh, city property and we require their permission to be removed. And likewise, the existing seating belongs to the city and it's part of the heritage uh, trail, bike trail. So uh, when those items came up in our August 2021 meeting, it was discussed by some of us that that whole seating thing didn't really drive with the, um, the aesthetics of the Illuminaire and that it had kind of a, a dowdy 80s, 90s, bulky, uh, appearance, you know, with that kind of terracotta color. So um, if in fact the city planner to leave those items, um, which it sounds like is the plan, um, has there been any, any discussion of making them integrate better, like painting them gray or anything like that? Since so much attention and care has been devoted to the aesthetics of the fencing and the decomposed granite and everything else, I just want to make sure that this will also kind of blend in there. So I'm not aware of any uh, ongoing discussions related to those features, uh, but I can certainly bring them up at, at the time of um, the, the review itself. Uh, and I'm not, I'll have to confirm with the departments that are in charge of those features and their upkeep and maintenance. So I can certainly make a note here. Okay, great. I would like to suggest or recommend to um, the applicant uh, and the city that um, consideration be given to paint those features or uh, stain the concrete or whatever it is that's required to make it kind of integrate more with that site because that is a very high visibility corner. And so we wanna make sure that it goes with the improvements that are being conducted. Okay, thank you. Um, and I think that concludes any questions I have for staff. Anyone else? Okay, so um, would someone like to make a motion? Okay, Member Hanson. Member Hanson, you're muted. Unmuted myself. Um, I move that the HSPB reevaluate the existing perimeter wall around the South parking lot as a non character defining feature to the Palm Springs Art Museum and conditionally approved the proposed perimeter fence design. Great. I'll second that motion. Uh, under discussion, could we? Uh, I understand what the, the representative for the museum said, but could we? Add into staff's attachment A that the fence shall be matte finish. I would feel more comfortable with that. I just think if it's if it's shiny, the issue is if it's shiny, it's going to detract even more from the sort of the subtle earth tones of the rest of the museum site. And I understand the the desire to make this security fencing match with the adjacent Illuminaire house, but if it's too shiny, it will 
begin to really detract, I think, from the fact that it is part of the museum site. That was my concern in bringing that up to begin with. But I'll support it either way. <laughs> so that is a, an amendment to the motion that um, we make sure the paint finish on the new geo fencing is a matte finish. And uh, I would just like to further clarify whether that is um, just an applied paint or if it's a factory applied matte finish powder coat just because we're looking at something that is obviously going to be in the full sun and will be exposed to the elements at all time. We wanna make sure that uh, it doesn't require constant repainting or care. So um, maybe the applicant can just clarify if they know if it's a factory finish or if it's just a simple hand finish before we uh, take the vote on this. I do not know and uh... I know that Alan Sanborn stepped off the call. Sarah, okay. Sarah, is, is that something, Sarah, that staff can, you know, that we can leave that? Sure, we can follow up with that. Staff just, to just up. Yeah, just to clarify, um, was the amendment to include um, a second point under the condition of approval? That would have been my recommendation is that the uh, attachment A from staff would be mm -hmm. amended to include a statement that says the fence shall be matte finish. Mm -hmm. And then um, Vice Chair Nelson also requested that it be a powder coated or factory finish as well for me. I don't, he, yeah, I don't think he su suggested that it be that. He was just asking the question. That's right. Oh, Am I right? That's right. So the condition of approval. So then can I amend my recommendation to reevaluate the existing perimeter wall around the South parking lot as a non character defining feature to the Palm Springs Art Museum and conditionally approve the promote proposed perimeter fence design with an adding condition that the finish on the fence be mapped. I'm, I'm good with that. Great, wonderful. Everyone clear on that? Okay, great. So uh, we have a motion by Member Hanson. We have a second by Vice Chair Nelson and an amendment by Member Miller. Do we have any further discussion? Okay, seeing none, I'll call for the question. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Looks like the motion passes five to zero. And um, at this time, I think that we can welcome back uh, Madam Chair Hawk. If staff could let her know if she can rejoin, please. Uh, oh, there she is. Thank you all. And just to clarify, that was a 4 0 vote for that last. Um... Oh, my apologies. <laughs> <laughs> so I have returned to the meeting. It's uh, 6 03. And thank you, uh, Vice Chair uh, Nelson, for uh, uh, handling those that item. So, uh, with no other agenda items, uh, let us proceed to uh, board member comments. And I would just like to begin um, by saying that um, uh, we all had our follow-up uh, duties after the Preservation uh, Matters Symposium, uh, lots of follow-ups and thank yous. And, and so I've completed my follow-up items uh, for the symposium. And I would like to request um, that we have a Preservation Symposium follow-up meeting, uh, ideally within the next two weeks, if possible. Uh, this would include our, our um, subcommittee and the staff, and I would hope that um, our subcommittee and staff would agree that we could get together and just do the follow-up and, you know, kind of concluding. Uh, um, it took a while to recover, and I realize that, so, but I think we should um, to have a follow-up. So, um, so that's my recommendation, and maybe we can... Um, uh, communicate by email with some suggested uh, dates. Maybe Sarah, 
if you want to see when you might be available and suggest a few dates to us and then we can let us let you know um, uh, what what works for everybody so is that good with uh, vice chair nelson and member hansen and sure. Dick cat who i see is in the audience hi dick <laughs> So, okay, sure. So I'll go ahead and um, send out the email and try to organize a date where we can all meet and have that meeting. Super. Thank you very much. Um, it was such a great symposium and we need to um, plan for the future as well. And so can I just add that um, I'm on vacation starting on the Saturday, the 17th. Okay. I would have to do it either Before sometime this week or next week. Okay. I agree with that because I'll be leaving uh, the following week. So if we could do it maybe before the 16th, that mm -hmm. would be ideal. Good. Right. Good. Okay. I'm on jury duty, but I hope I won't get called, uh, but it is a privilege. So I'll wait and hear from, from the jury if they want me. So, okay, uh, are there any other board member uh, comments today? Vice Chair Nelson? Yes. Um, I didn't bring it up during the discussion on the Illuminaire because I'm not a licensed landscape professional and I didn't feel it was really necessary. But um, at this time, I just didn't want to say that um, I feel like there's a lot of trees proposed around that uh, perimeter. And I was gonna bring it up, but then I bit my tongue. So I'm, I'm saying it now, um, just so you're aware, but there's 18 tipu trees and 15 Carolina cherries. And so I don't know if they're trying to create the impression or the illusion that this is a kind of um, oasis or a, a, a wooded area, kind of like the original setting. But there are some disadvantages to tipu trees. Uh, they're invasive. They have roots that can destroy sidewalks and pathways. So I'm just bringing this up so staff is aware. And I'll be sending staff my direct concerns on this so that they can pass them on to the applicant. So that being said, um, yeah. I was also at the plaza, La Plaza. Uh, the other day, walking around, as I often am when I go downtown. And there's some very disturbing things, um, some uh, deferred maintenance and general neglect. Um, there's an area near French uh, Mito, which is the little cafe back there, um, kind of behind Grand Central and the hair salon. Um, like in the back of Le Tallier Cafe, where there's just all kinds of wires, like telecommunication wires and cables and things. And it doesn't look very safe. It looks somewhat hazardous. So I just wanted to make sure that as a classroom historic site, that um, that uh, that huge property is being um, checked on by code enforcement. Uh, because it seems like there's probably some obvious violations or comforting things there that are, are not safe. And I worry about potential fire or other things like that being caused by all of the extemporaneous uh, wires and, and things like that. And they also don't make the site look any prettier. Um, on the flip side, I was walking by Town and Country Center the other day. And I was very pleased to see that the southern half has been repainted and restored and that all of the extemporaneous additions at the old uh, hamburger cafe have been stripped and that whole walkway is now wide open and clear. Uh, so that was very encouraging and very nice to see. And uh, the last thing is the last information we received from staff regarding the Bank of America with further complications uh, discovered due to structural issues with the roof joist that extend out into the canopy. And so it seems like there will be yet another holdup uh, in this long 
an exhaustive restoration process. So hopefully uh, staff will say something to that effect in the staff report. Otherwise, that's all I have. Thank you. Okay. Any any other comments uh, from the, from the board today? Any other uh, comments? Okay. Um, so, um, Sarah, I wanted to ask about uh, applications review schedule for uh, for board positions. Um, do you have any information to provide to us about how that is proceeding or what we can expect? So my understanding is that interviews will be conducted very soon by city council. I know that the notification for the openings have been sent out. Um, I believe most of our board members who um, were wanting to reapply have already done so. And they should be hearing back soon if they haven't already. Um, Member, Rosen Member Rosenau, did you have a statement? Uh, yeah, we were contact. I was contacted today, uh, and okay. we're scheduled for a special meeting with the city council. Um, I believe it's June twenty seven. Okay, thank you. June. 27. Okay. All right. Well, we'll look forward to hearing about that. Um, so, um, okay. In, uh, before uh, moving on to staff comments, is there any other uh, board comments? Any at all? Okay. So how about staff comments? Um, I just had one comment. Um, we, I just wanted to inform the HSPB that uh, City Council did approve uh, the designation of both the golf course, the Talkwoods Golf Course Clubhouse, and the Security First National Bank designation on May 25th. So I just wanted to let everyone know that those did go through and both of those properties will now be designated a class one site. Mm -hmm. So thank you for everyone's effort and, um, you know, we'll keep plugging along. Yeah, I um, uh, viewed that meeting and, and it, it went very well. And uh, all the comments were great that you made, uh, Sarah. And it was an excellent presentation. So thank you for making that go through so well. So um, uh, Vice Chair Nelson? Yeah, um, if I could just kindly ask Sarah to just read into the record for the public, just a very quick snippet on an update on what's going on with BFA. I think the public uh, deserve to know. Mm -hmm. the, the progress of the Bank of America. Thank yeah, you. So there, there's, um, there's a number of things going on at the Bank of America as everyone um, is able to see. Uh, the curtain wall uh, project has been under underway. There's also a painting scheme that's going on on the exterior. Um, I believe a member Nelson mentioned really briefly um, as they were peeling back uh, the, the construction, they are realizing that there are issues with the existing trusses, which are wooden, which was a surprise to us all. And there's some rot there. And so they are doing um, a lot of uh, repair and maintenance as this project moves forward. But we are confident that the team is um, doing the best um, in terms of the restoration efforts. They are in full communication with staff. Uh, and so we are um, working with them diligently to make sure that that restoration continues forward. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. We can um, provide any information that we have as an update. Thank you. Good. Thank you very much for, for that update. So any other um, staff comments, any other comments today? So seeing uh, no further discussions, uh, this meeting of the Historic Site Preservation Board is adjourned to the meeting of Tuesday, July 5th, 2023 at 5.30 p.m. Chair Huff, it's actually Wednesday. Okay. Oh, that's <laughs> right. Oh boy, Wednesday, but it is July 5th. Yes, so thank you for that correction again. So, okay. So we meet Wednesday, July 5th at 5.30. So thank you. And I wanna thank everyone for their participation today. So thank you and see you again very soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Thank you.